Very few newborns look picture perfect at birth. They can appear squashed, puffy eyed, wrinkly, even bruised from the delivery. Most, if not all of these are temporary. Because the infant's head is usually the first part through the birth canal, it can be affected by the delivery process. The head may be pointed from the skull bones, the fontanelles, overlapping during the journey out. If your baby was delivered by forceps or using a suction cap, there may be little marks on the head, but these will fade within the first few days. Your baby may come out with a head of hair or completely bald. Any hair is likely to be replaced, probably with a different color and texture. There may be some hair on the body called lanugo, which kept them cozy during the pregnancy. The muscles that control a new baby's eye movements are still very weak, so they may look a little cross-eyed at first. After a month or so, the muscles will have developed enough for the eyes to work together. Immediately after delivery, the umbilical cord is cut and a plastic clamp is placed on it. Over the next few days, the cord will darken, shrivel up and then drop off. A few minutes after birth, most infants open their eyes and start to look around at their environment. Your baby can see quite well at birth, especially things that are close. They can also hear and may be startled by loud noises. Your baby will recognise your voice from hearing it in the womb. Changing your newborn's nappy is one of those things you'll be doing seven or eight times a day, so it's best to be organised from the start. Make sure you have everything you need ready and close to hand. Place your baby on a clean, soft, flat surface. Open the nappy and wipe away excess stools from the genital area with the corner of the nappy. Hold your baby by the ankles and lift up their bottom. Use soft cotton balls or a wet cloth to clean your baby. Clean around the umbilical cord area. For a girl, be sure to wipe from front to back. This will help minimise the spread of an infection. Swap a clean nappy for the dirty one. Use the tabs to see which way goes up. Avoid covering the umbilical cord as this can cause irritation. For a boy, keep his penis pointed down. Fasten the nappy at both sides with the tapes, making sure it's snug, but not so tight that it pinches the skin. Retape the soiled nappy around the contents, put it in a plastic bag and discard it in the bin. Dress your baby and wash your hands thoroughly. Babies wet their nappies several times a day. The number of wet nappies is a helpful sign of how much fluid the baby is taking in. Generally, a baby should have five to six wet nappies each day. This is a good indication that they're getting enough milk.
I'm going to do the cord when my hands are clean. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water. I've got a little bit of cotton wool here and I'm going to clean the cord. So I'm going right down to the base of the cord. Go right down to the base. Now the cord stump is clamped at delivery to prevent bleeding. That cord stump is going to get darker over the first couple of days. It's going to fall off in about five or six days. And when the cord stump falls off, the cord clamp falls off with it. You're left with a oozy area that stays oozy for nearly 12 days. And you clean it for nearly 12 days. And in 12 days, it look like you and I and you forget about them. If it ever gets inflamed, foul smelling, bleeding, always take your baby to a doctor or clinic. Congratulations if you've decided to breastfeed. This is the best start in life you can give your baby. Breast milk is unrivaled as the ideal food. Not only has it the perfect mix of nutrients, but also all of the infection-fighting antibodies your baby needs. However, like anything, breastfeeding is a skill that needs to be learned. But once it's established, it will give you great pleasure. Breastfeeding is the very best start you can give your baby in life. It is a very special, unique formula, tailor-made for babies. It actually protect, protects your baby against um, all known infections, particularly ear infections and chest infections, and also protects your baby against viruses. We now know that breast milk also helps uh, develop your ba baby's um, nervous system. For you, breastfeeding is really good. It helps you build up a unique bond with your baby, because when you breastfeed, you release lots of lovely hormones that help and aid this bonding. It also helps you get your figure back because you burn up 500 calories more per day when you breastfeed. And it has a great protection against ovarian cancer, breast cancer and osteoporosis. While you're still pregnant and in the early days after the birth, your breasts begin to produce a substance called colostrum. This is extremely easy for your baby to digest, making it the perfect first food. The first hours after delivery is the ideal time to get started on your breastfeeding. If you feed your baby whenever they're hungry, you'll produce plenty of milk to meet their needs. Your breasts produce milk in response to the baby's feeding. So the more you feed, the more milk you'll produce. Supply meets demand. Every time your baby feeds, your milk supply is being built up. How your baby is attached to the breast is key to the success of breastfeeding. This is called latching on. When your baby is in position, wait until their mouth is open wide. You can tease it open by gently pressing the upper lip with your nipple. Bring your baby to your breast, the chin and lower lip first. Baby's mouth should cover all your nipple and about one inch of the brown circle, the areola, around your nipple. Your nipple should touch the roof of the baby's mouth with his tongue underneath. Once your baby has a good latch on, there'll be a period of quick suckling to get the milk flowing and then rhythmic suckling. When your baby is properly attached to your breast, you'll notice that his mouth is wide open with a big mouthful of breast and his top and bottom lip are curled out, like the letter K. His cheeks are full and rounded and his chin is pressed into your breast. The suckling pattern changes from short sucks at the beginning to long, deep sucks with pauses. There are many different ways to position and attach your baby, but there's some key principles. So I'm going to talk you through a number of different holes. Uh, the first thing I would say to mums is get yourself comfortable. 
Finding a position that suits you and your baby is important for successful breastfeeding. Make sure you're comfortable and well supported. Use pillows or cushions if necessary. And whether you're sitting up or lying down, keep a drink close by and most of all, relax. There's some new research out on a new position for breastfeeding called biological nurturing. And this actually works very well in attaching a baby on a breast. In this position, the mother is not sitting up bolt right upright or lying down. She's semi-inclined and she's lying the baby on top of her body. And in this position, the baby actually self-attaches. This hold now, if you put the baby in what's called the crook of your arm, lying along your forearm, and position the baby with its tummy to mummy's tummy. We call it tummy to tummy. With the baby in a straight line, and if you tuck the baby's bum under your other breast, it makes for very good alignment. Then we encourage mothers in the early days of breastfeeding to support their breast with feeding. You can do this by going in onto the breast with a C hold. Now mothers often instinctively go in with a V hold, but that'll actually make your nipple very sore. So if you support the breast in a C hold with the under finger well away from the areola, that will actually make a very good shape of the breast for your baby. It's tummy to tummy, it's nose opposite nipple, and it's a C hold on the breast. And when the baby opens its mouth, you bring the baby swiftly onto the breast. So we say, bring the baby to the breast and not the breast to the baby. This will actually make for very good attachment. Another variation of this hold is actually something called the cross cradle hold. And a lot of new mums like to initiate this with breastfeeding because they feel they have a lot of, of control in, in the actual initiation of the latch. In this, it's similar to the first hold, except you're doing the C hold with your other hand and you're holding the baby's back and neck with the baby in straight alignment again. So it's very important that you hold the baby's back and neck and again you're supporting the breast in a C shape and you're bringing the baby to the breast waiting for the baby to make a large open mouth and when it makes a large open mouth you're swiftly bringing it onto the breast and then you can put your arm around the baby like this and relax into a nice comfortable breastfeed. There's another hold you can use for breastfeeding called the rugby hold or the football hold. So in this hold you support the baby's back and neck and um, let the baby lie along your arm and tuck the baby underneath your breast. And in this position um, you use the same principles of nose opposite nipple and bring the baby to the breast with a wide open mouth. This is a very good position to use for babies, uh, particularly twins. Another way of breastfeeding your baby is lying on your side with your baby tucked up beside you. A lot of mums uh, breastfeed lying down in bed, particularly late uh, during the night. With this, the mother lies on the bed with two pillows, usually her head on the pillow and her shoulders on the bed, and tucks her baby up beside her, nose opposite nipple. Again, it would be the same principles of bringing the baby swiftly onto the breast when the baby makes a wide open mouth. This is a really comfortable way to feed a baby. There are lots of good indicators that breastfeeding is going very well by looking at your baby's output. In the first couple of days, the babies have very little wet nappies, and ideally one wet nappy. Day one, two, day two, three, day three. And when your milk comes in on day five, the baby will normally have about six wet nappies in 24 hours. This is a really good indication the baby is breastfeeding well. Another very good indication is actually looking at the stools. And babies have meconium stools for the first day or two and they have a changing stool which is usually black, green or brown day two, day three, day four. And when your milk comes in, a baby who's breastfeeding really well will have three to four yellow CD stools in 24 hours. If your baby has these sort of stools, the baby is breastfeeding very well. Your breastfeeding is going well when your baby is alert and waking for feeds, has a minimum of five or six wet nappies and two soiled nappies per day after the first week, has gained weight, sleeps and settles during the day and is feeding comfortably and pain-free. If a baby is not correctly latched on your breast, you won't see rounded cheeks, you'll see dimple cheeks. You'll also see the baby doing very short little sucklings as opposed to long rhythmic sucklings, or you may see a lot of the areola. Um, in that case, you also may feel a lot of discomfort feeding. So if, th if that happens, it's very important to break the latch and start again. And the best way to do that is actually put your finger into the baby's mouth and let the baby actually suck on your finger and break the latch very gently. Signs that breastfeeding may not be going as well for you is if the baby is not wetting and dirtying its nappies. So particularly in the early days, if you look for urates in the nappy, which is pink staining, and if the baby is not passing sufficient wet and dirty nappies, it would be very good to contact a health professional to help you with your breastfeeding. 
nature has been researching your milk for hundreds of millions of years. The composition of your milk is alive and changes throughout the day, the night, the months and the years to meet your child's needs. Your milk contains stem cells. These are cells that create and repair the body and are being researched worldwide to cure conditions like Alzheimer's and diabetes. Your milk contains components that kill cancerous cells. Your body identifies bacteria and viruses found in your baby's body and environment. You then produce antibodies specifically tailored to those infections and deliver them to your child through your milk. Your milk appears to switch on a gene in your baby's body which produces a hormone called leptin. This hormone tells your baby when his tummy is full, protecting him against overeating. Your milk contains oxytocin, a hormone that induces relaxation and feelings of well-being in your child and in you. It's all in you. Human milk, tailor-made for tiny humans. Infant formula can provide the correct nutrients for your baby, but cannot provide the protection against illness. As it can take some time before a newborn's immune system develops, all equipment must be washed well and sterilized before feeding. It's very important to keep all equipment used for baby feeding thoroughly clean. It doesn't matter whether it's breast or bottle feeding, we're talking bottles, teats, breast pumps. They need to be washed thoroughly and then sterilized. This is to prevent babies getting infections. There will be clear and detailed instructions on the packaging of the formula you use. Make sure you follow them precisely. To prepare a bottle feed, boil fresh tap water in a kettle. When it's boiled, leave it to cool in the kettle for 30 minutes, but no longer. Clean the work surface well and wash and dry your hands. Remove the lid from the sterilizer and take out the bottle, the teat and the cap using tongs. Carefully pour the required amount of boiled water into the bottle. Use clean scoop provided, add the exact amount of formula to the boiled water. Remember, adding too much or too little formula could make your baby sick. Reseal the packaging to protect it from germs and moisture. Screw the bottle lid tightly and shake well to mix the contents. To check the feed is not too hot, shake the bottle and place a drop of liquid on the inside of your wrist. It should feel lukewarm, not hot. To cool the feed down quickly, hold the bottle under cold running water or place it in a large bowl of cold water, making sure the water doesn't reach above the neck of the bottle. Your newborn will probably take between two and four ounces per feed during the first few weeks and will probably be hungry every two to four hours. This is only a guideline and it's recommended to feed your baby whenever and as often as they look for food. Do not try and make your baby finish a bottle if they don't want to and never reuse leftover milk once your baby finishes feeding. There are hunger cues to look out for. 
Babies will stick out their tongue, they may pout their lips, they may put their hand in their mouths, they may eventually start crying. But don't let your baby cry too much before a feed because they can take in quite a lot of air which can cause discomfort for them later on. When feeding your baby, you should be in a comfortable chair and position. Lean your baby back at a slight incline while supporting the back of the head and neck. Your baby's head should be higher than the rest of their body. When you're feeding, hold the bottle with the end tilted up enough so the milk completely fills the nipple. This stops your baby swallowing air. As the bottle empties, you may find you need to hold it almost upright. When babies feed, especially from a bottle, they take in air. They can also take in air if they cry before feeding. If the air isn't brought up, it can get trapped and cause discomfort later on. There are some common positions for winding, but use whatever suits you and your baby best. Try holding your baby, leaning against your shoulder and rubbing or patting their back. It's a good idea to put a towel or a cloth over your shoulder in case more than wind comes up. Another position is sitting your baby upright on your lap, supporting him under his chin and rubbing his back. Or lying your baby face down across your lap and gently rubbing or patting their back can also be a good way of bringing up wind. Make sure the room is nice and warm. Make sure the place is all clean around you and that you have all your equipment available to you before you start to bath. From once you start bathing your baby, from once you start changing your baby, you cannot go to another area of the room to get anything else because babies can roll off at any age, fracture arm, leg, skull, so it's very important to stay with your baby when you're on a surface like this. You put your cold water in first, you add your hot, you just check it with your elbow. If it's comfortable for your elbow, it's fine for the baby. It's about 36 degrees centigrade, the water temperature. Again, I have all my equipment here. I have the towel, so I have everything ready to go. Uh, babies sometimes will cry quite a bit when they go into the bath initially because they've been in clear line in there, very cosy for nine months, and now they're out and we're changing them, and it's, they're also getting used to the new world. So be very, very gentle, take it easy. You put your hand underneath the baby's head like that. You just took the baby under your elbow, resting on your hip. Sometimes babies get sticky eyes where their dunks don't function that well initially. So that's why we night clean them, keep them nice and clean. Now I'm holding the baby in the same position and I'm going to wash the baby's hair. Uh, if you're using um, a solution or so buy something that's unperfumed, and uh, you they don't need too many smelly products, as I said earlier. Just wash the baby's hair. Just bring up the water, just wash the baby's hair. Nice and gently. Don't be worried about the head, because there are two little soft parts in the head called fontanelles. One closed over in eight months, the other closed over in 18 months. So just wash it nice and gently. This is a very good baby. And I'm gonna come back onto my mat, and I'm going to lie the baby back down, and I'm going to dry the baby's head well. Babies lose a lot of heat from their heads, so make sure that you dry the baby's head very well. Now, when you're lifting the baby into the bath, just turn the baby over on its side, over in this position. Just put one arm, your left arm, underneath the head and hold on to the left arm. And put your right arm underneath the bottom and hold on to the left leg. Now, you see, there is no way this baby's going to fall on me. I've got the head well supported, my arm here on the left, and I've got a good grip of the baby. Nice and gently, and nice and gently, you're going to let the baby into the bath. Just, if the baby's enjoying it, of course, just leave them in for a little while. Babies are very used to water from being inside, so they love the sound of the water. I'm going to lift the baby out again. Now, you see, I'm lifting the baby out nice and gently. Now, so you settle them down, give them a little cuddle settle them down and then you're going to dry the baby off well. Don't forget areas where they can get sore if you leave them wet. All babies are quite fat in here, so get right in there onto the chin because if you leave areas wet, they're going to get red and sore. They are all get right onto the armpit here where they're all they're like that. And another area is get right onto the behind the knees and in the groin area. They're areas that can actually get sore if you leave them wet. 
so you make sure that you dry those areas off very well. The first cries of a baby are music to the new parent's ears and in their early days crying will be your baby's way of telling you what they need. It will take a little while for you to get used to your baby's cries but soon you learn how to understand them so you can provide comfort. It's perfectly normal for the newborn baby to cry from when the baby is born initially the baby takes that one life starting breath that lovely luscious cry comes out when the baby exhales. Um, and babies cry for any number of reasons. Um, initially it's not because there's anything wrong, it's just how a baby communicates. The reason why your baby can cry is if your baby is hungry, although generally that's a late feeding cue, um, if your baby has a soiled nappy, um, if your baby is windy. If your baby gets up wind, they'll probably be hungry again because the wind has taken up the space of food. Once they've burped, they might want more food. If your baby has been overhandled, which is very common in the first couple of days with all relations visiting and handling the baby, your baby can be very, very unsettled and crying a lot, especially at night. Ways to comfort the baby then, pick the baby up. Can't, spoil a new, can't really spoil a newborn baby. Um, you could check their nappy first of all, make sure they're dry, they're not dirty, the nappy's not too tight, clothes are not restricting. Pop the baby onto the chest making sure the baby's face is free so the baby is, can breathe. You can rub the back or pat the back to help baby get a wind if wind is a problem. Bring, making sure that the baby's legs are nice and straight, the bottom is to the chest so that the tummy is good and straight there like that. Putting the baby in your arms and gently rocking the baby. Babies can get very, very irritated if you kind of jig them and never, ever, ever shake a baby because it can have serious consequences. When you take your baby home initially, babies don't know the difference between day and night, so they really will sleep and eat and sleep and eat. Newborn babies can sleep for almost 16 to 18 hours a day, so it takes a little while for them to get into their routine. Their tummy's small, so they need to feed frequently. It is important to get the right environment from the word go and to get routines in place, and it's terribly important to keep your baby in the bedroom with you, asleep in their own cot for the first six months of their lives. It's important to get the temperature of the room right for your baby. Um, the temperature that's recommended is 16 to 20 degrees centigrade. Make sure your baby's not lying near, a cot's not near a radiator, a window with the sun shining in. Just that they're comfortable but not overheated. And sometimes if the weather's colder you may need extra blankets. If it's warmer you can take a blanket off. The message really is if it's comfortable for you, it's comfortable for your baby. If it's too hot or too cold for you, it's similar for your baby. It takes a little while for babies to get into a nice routine. This will come eventually, but initially you have to try and establish a nice routine. Feed your baby regularly during the day. Don't let babies go for longer than four hours during the day without a feed, particularly breastfeeding babies. Bottle-fed babies generally feed three to four hourly. Then during the night, uh, when you're putting baby to bed, try and have a nice calm environment. It would be very nice if you could bath your baby before your last feed because babies can sleep very well after a bath. Settle them down, nice calm voice, a little bit, bit of baby massage if you can. And in the night time, when babies wake up in the night, keep everything dark and dull. No bright lights, no chat to the baby whatsoever. Just feed them, change them and put them down quickly. And soon baby will know the difference between day and night but that can take a couple of weeks. It's uh, very important that the baby is lying on a good firm mattress, uh, back to sleep, feet to foot. Uh, make sure there's no uh, duvets, bumpers, pillows, nothing that can obstruct the baby's airway. A blanket should be at shoulder level, tucked well under the mattress. And the blankets that we recommend are cotton cellular blankets. They're the only blankets that are really recommended for the first year of life. It's very important to sleep your baby safely and the message is back to sleep, feet to foot position. And the reason for this is that the baby can't go down onto the blankets, the only way they can go is up. So it's terribly important to have them feet to foot, back to sleep. 
And this is also a reason why we don't suggest you sleep with your baby in your bed because babies can roll under heavy warm duvet and can smother. Having a baby comes with an overwhelming sense of responsibility. As a new parent, your child is completely dependent on you to keep them safe. The most important safety device is always going to be your supervision. So always be on the lookout for new dangers. Always put your baby on their back to sleep, even for naps, with their feet at the foot of the cot to prevent them from slipping down beneath the covers. Have blankets coming up no further than their shoulders. Keep the cot empty from anything that could cause suffocation. No pillows, duvets or stuffed toys and remove all plastic covering. Never place a cot beside a window or a radiator as this can result in the baby overheating. 18 degrees Celsius is the ideal room temperature. Don't allow your baby to overheat. Don't allow anyone to smoke near your baby and make sure anyone caring for your baby knows the correct sleeping position. A common cause of accidents for new babies is falling off changing units or other high places. To avoid this, choose a changing unit that's sturdy, always keep one hand on the baby when changing and keep everything you need within arm's reach and never leave a baby alone on a changing table. When preparing your baby's bath, pour the cold water in first and then add hot water. Always check the water temperature before putting your baby in, have everything ready and close to hand before you begin, and never leave a baby unattended in water. Install smoke alarms throughout the house and check the batteries regularly. Eliminate fire hazards. Don't smoke, put out all candles, and cover fires with a fire guard. Check appliances for loose wires or frayed flexes. Never leave the room with a chip or a frying pan on. Keep fire extinguishers in the kitchen and anywhere there is an open fire. And close all doors at night.